my name's Rebecca, and I'm here to read you a story. It's called Derek the Dredger and the Maritime Archaeologists. Are you ready? On the dark and mysterious seabed, deep beneath the sea, lie old ships and galleons older than you and me. Scuba divers swim in the sea learning about this underwater world. They use air tanks to help them breathe and dive into the deep unknown. If you dare, you could explore life under the sea too. Many shipwrecks lie on the bottom of the sea that have been sunk by storms, rocks and swashbuckling pirates. The sea holds on to these treasures like secrets from the past and maritime archaeologists dive down to search for them. They use these ancient hidden artefacts and shipwrecks to help us understand the secrets of the past. They give us clues about lives, our grandparents' lives, their grandparents' lives, and so on and on and on. Professor Archaeology and Professor Maritime are maritime archaeologists and best friends. One day, Marie and Archie were diving in the English Channel looking for the remains of a full hundred-year-old Spanish galleon. Marie swam through the water like a mermaid, with Archie trundling behind her. It was getting late and Archie signalled to Marie with his hands. Come on, let's go home. They spiralled slowly from the depths up towards the surface, disappointed that they'd found nothing. They climbed onto their boat, White Spirit ready for a nice cup of tea. That disaster! The engine would not start. Fiddlesticks, said Archie. Double fiddlesticks. Professor Archie sighed. Some days nothing goes right, Marie. Do you think we will have to paddle back? Suddenly, Marie saw a tiny shape moving on the horizon. Wait, Archie, she cried. Look! The tiny shape was moving towards them getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Fantastic! It is a sturdy ship to help us to safety. Ahoy! Ahoy! Roared Archie. The big ship glided close and looming high above them in their little boat. The ship pulled up alongside them. Our engine is broken. Could you please take us back to port? Asked Marie in her friendliest voice. It would be my pleasure, you poor lost souls. Boomed a friendly voice. Fantastic, Fantastic said Archie and Marie as they clambered up the ladder and onto the ship. Golly gumdrops, said Archie. This is hard work. As he pulled himself up the ladder. I'm not as fit as I used to be. Well, said Marie, you are, you are older than time itself. Cheeky. Puffed Archie as he pulled himself over the side and fell onto the ship. Marie followed Archie and they both found themselves tumbling down into a great heap of sand and gravel. Welcome aboard! Boomed a loud and friendly voice. Goodness! Just Archie. We've landed in a great sand pit. And you are sitting on my pincer. <laughs> said a little voice. Oops! Said Marie, who found a small crab tucked beneath her foot. Sorry, she said as it stuffed away. Good afternoon. How very nice to meet you. I am Derek. Derek the Dredger. And I am delighted to have guests. Oh, what a splendid surprise. It can be a very lonely job being a dredger, searching the sea for sand and gravel. But it suits me fine. I love knowing that the gravel and the sand, which I suck up from the seabed, will help to build roads and homes for people on the dry land. Goodness gracious me, said Archie. That sounds like a very useful job. We're Professor Archaeology and Professor Mary Time, but please call us Archie and Marie. We search the seabed, just like you do. We look for, for objects from history to tell us about the past. Thank you for stopping, said Archie. Very much, agreed Marie. Ah, history, said Derek with a warm sigh. It is such a joy to learn about the past. 
the sea has claimed a lot of good ships, many of who were friends of mine. I lost my own grandmother to a storm when I was young and miss her dearly every day and I always wonder what happened to her. What a fascinating job you do. I am just a humble dredger, a bit like my cousins, the diggers who work on land, digging up the air. Harry was sad that Derek had lost his grandma, but suddenly something caught her eye. What is that? Poking up from the sand and gravel. She started digging in the pile and pulled something out. <gasps> it's a bone! she exclaimed. And look, here's a piece of flint. Archie scrambled over to take a closer look. This is a piece of archaeology. It could even be a very old artifact from long ago. We should investigate. Wow, said Marie. This is just what we've been looking for. How did you find this, Derek? Well, Derek replied. I sometimes stumble on odd bits and pieces when I am dredging. You see, I dig from the very bottom of the seabed. But, but we spent a long time diving today and we did not find any artefacts like this. This is a wonderful thing to find. How did you do it, Derek? I use a special machine called sonar. Said Derek. It sends me pictures of the seabed and shows me the best places to dig up sand and gravel. Sometimes I even see shipwrecks too. That is so exciting, said Marie. Will you tell us when you find more, more archaeology? I'd be happy to. Beamed, Derek. That's what friends are for. Archie and Marie watched the coastline come into view as they chatted with Derek. They all agreed that working together would be much more fun. Archie and Marie were tired but happy to be on their way home, safe and sound, sound, all thanks to Derek. The new friends all hoped they could work together again very soon to find hidden artifacts. The next day, like detectives, Marie and Archie used clues, books and pictures to try and work out what the artifacts could be. Hmm, said Marie, I think this piece of flint could have been used as a tool to hunt animals. Yes, said Archie. And this is the bone of the animal they hunted. Wow! Suddenly the phone rang. Archie answered it and listened carefully. It's Derek! He called to Marie. He's found a shipwreck on his sonar machine and he wants us to investigate it before he dredges in the area. What are we waiting for? grinned Marie. There's no time to lose, let's go! They jumped into their little boat and zoomed off to find Derek. Out at sea, the professors got to work. On board Derek, they looked at his wonderful sonar pictures of the shipwreck. Then they made an action plan. Marie was itching to go and finally they jumped in and sank down onto the shipwreck. They investigated the shipwreck by measuring it, drawing it and by taking photos. Whilst Marie and Archie were on the seabed, Derek was on the surface. He had noticed distant dark clouds forming and strong winds blowing. Oh no! Thought Derek. Danger! Ships at sea must always be aware of weather conditions. Stormy weather has turned many sturdy ships into shipwrecks. Archie and Marie were well prepared and made sure they came to the surface before any bad weather set in. But the sea and the wind have minds of their own. Archie and Marie got back onto their boat. You should go in, said Derek. There is a storm brewing. What about you, Derek? asked Marie. I am strong, said Derek. And I have seen many storms. Don't worry about me. Thank you, Derek, they cried and safely sped back to land with all of their discoveries. Back on dry land, Archie and Marie took all their measurements, drawings and photos into the library. All night long, they looked in old books to see if their underwater drawings and measurements matched any of the ancient sunken ships from history. Meanwhile, Derek was still out dredging at sea, and the storm was getting closer and closer and bigger and bigger. The rain was stinging Derek's face, 
and the ferocious waves seem to be grabbing at him as if to pull him to the depths below. Back in the library, a discovery. Hooray! I know which ship it is! exclaimed Archie. It's the Tudor Tulip! Marie was stunned! Wow! That's a really important ship! It's nearly 500 years old! Eureka! yelled Archie. Lost for 500 years and now found, thanks to Derek's help. But out at sea, Derek needed more than thanks. He needed help. The winds were howling, the rain was lashing down and the waves were like white-tipped, angry giants. Derek was scared of becoming a shipwreck himself. He gritted his teeth, stared at the moon and said under his breath, Be brave, Derek. Hold on in there. He needed to find a place to hide from the storm. Suddenly, through the rain, he spotted a tiny sheltered bay in the far off distance. With all his remaining energy, he pushed through the waves, struggling towards the bay. Finally, he arrived and was exhausted. He lowered his anchor to wait until the storm was over. The next morning, the storm had ended and the sun was shining brightly. Derek blinked with blurry, tired eyes and saw something on the beach. Derek was puzzled and moved a little closer. What could that be? He thought. It's a shipwreck. I will call my friends, the archaeologists. As soon as they heard the news, the professors jumped into their boat and followed Derek's directions to the hidden bay. What a wonderful shipwreck! exclaimed Marie. The professors set to work. They measured it, drew it and took photos in exactly the same way as they did undersea. After lots of talking and looking through their special shipwreck book, the professors worked out the name of the shipwreck. It's Bernadette, the bucket dredger. She's more than 100 years old. Suddenly, Derek looked really sad and started to cry. Bernadette was my granny, said Derek. She mysteriously disappeared over 30 years ago when I was just learning to dredge. Oh. As if by magic, Bernadette suddenly opened her eyes. Derek. She said. Is that really you? Bernadette was overjoyed. Please don't cry, Derek. I'm okay. I like to sit in the gravel on this beautiful beach with the seagulls and crabs to talk to. I even make friends with the fish when the tide comes in. Now that you know where I am, you can come and visit me whenever you want. Derek and Bernadette were so happy. With the help of Archie and Marie, they found each other once more. Derek hoped too that he and the professors would keep working together to make more exciting discoveries.